Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to show you how to make these filing cabinets with a huge amount of storage in them. You guys probably saw the video from a couple of weeks ago where we made the desk and the filing cabinets. This one is actually freestanding here, but the one over there is actually more of a desk set of drawers and that is actually the leg of the desk over there. These filing cabinets are a relatively simple project. I got my cut list right here. One of these is actually going to be for a two drawer file cabinet and the other one's going to be for a four drawer, just kind of a desk drawer type of thing. We're gonna make it from three quarter and half inch plywood and we're gonna hack all of that up using the table saw and a track saw. I'm going to be using this combination blade from Amana Tools that allows me to rip and cross cut the plywood with super clean lines. The saw is unplugged in case you were worried. We just cut the top half of this half inch plywood off using the track saw. I want to go ahead and get these bottom pieces, which I wasn't able to get in line on the cut list, off the top here so that I don't forget and actually ruin these pieces. It is time to do some iron on edge banding. We need to get the front edge of both sides of the filing cabinet, and then we need the visible edge, so the bottom and then the top of the two pieces that are gonna make up the front supporting structure boards. It is now time to assemble the frame of the filing cabinet. We're going to use one and a quarter inch coarse pocket screws. We're going to be mounting on the inside here so we have the nice finished look. We want to make sure we have our edge banded part down in the front on the top and up on the bottom. And then I cut these little reinforcement triangles and we will tack them in right at the top here to make sure we have plenty of lateral support so this thing doesn't blow apart when we pick it up. Thank <laughs> you. 
I have gone ahead and edge banded the top of all of the portions of the drawer. Same process as edge banding the frame of the filing cabinet. And now we're gonna go ahead and assemble. The biggest things we wanna be careful of whoa, is making sure that the assembly is the same for all of the drawers so that we don't mess up the spacing that we need for the drawer sides. And in my case, I'm putting the sides on the outside of the front and back. And that is because everything will be hidden when we put the drawer front on there and it will look very nice. And the bottoms are just glued and brad nailed right to the bottom. I've had no trouble with assembling drawers like this with hundreds of pounds inside them. Yes, you see the plies on the side when you pull open the drawer, but it's definitely easier to assemble this way than going on the inside. I wanna pay attention to my glue squeeze out because I am just gonna be clear coating these and not painting them with a color. One of the nicest things I think about doing the bottom of drawers this way is you can use the base here to pull everything perfectly square. So you set one corner and then you can move the base around to set the other side. And then if you need to, you can push and pull the bottom here to make sure you have everything perfectly square. I'll bet you you didn't know. Actually, I guarantee you didn't know because I didn't know until a couple of days ago that I have a second channel, DIY Tyler 2. There's a link to that at the top of the description down there. And over there, I'm going to be doing some live builds. We've done a couple live builds on this channel, but I wanna make sure that everything stays separate. During that live build, someone asked me why I did the edge banding if I was just gonna paint these things anyway. And then I'm using spackle to fill in the holes. So. What's the difference? In my opinion, the edge banding does a better job of sealing the grain, whereas using this over the grain isn't quite as good, but it works fantastic for nail holes. sand with 180 grit you want to make sure you go quickly though because it is plywood and the veneers are very thin and I always like to wipe my projects off with a tack cloth before applying finish and after the first coat of sanding sealer I will sand by hand with 220 grit only takes a second and then I will wipe it off with the tack cloth again before I go to my top coat Okay, our order of operations is as follows. Everything will get a coat of General Finish's sanding sealer using a 1.3 millimeter tip, and then we will go to General Finish's high performance polyurethane using the T70G with a 1.3 millimeter tip as well. And then the file cabinet carcasses will get uh, General Finish's white poly tinted to a color we have previously used. And we will spray that with a 1.0 tip in the Fuji T70G gun.
We started these file cabinets before I started working on the desk slab. So I didn't know how thick that was going to be and I wanted some leeway in the file cabinets. So I built the file cabinets a little bit shorter and then I made these bases much bigger than I thought I would need, but now we can cut these down. So I know how thick the desk slab is. We know the height that we want the top at and we can subtract the difference of that plus the filing cabinet and then cut off the bottom of this base that we're gonna to attach to the filing cabinets and that'll give us the perfect height. Well, that is a wrap. These turned out beautiful. I love the finish that we've put in this office space and on these filing cabinets. And there is a ton of storage in here compared to that old ugly metal filing cabinet that I used to have in here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it helped some of you out. If it did, please hammer that thumbs up button as it helps us out and gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler and you guys have a good one.